Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video is going to explain one of the key ideas in modern neuroevolution research, novelty search, also referred to as quality diversity algorithms. This video is going to explain the foundational paper that introduces novelty search as an objective rather than evaluating populations in evolutionary algorithm based only on their fitness function. This paper is in line with the September theme on Henry AI Labs on AutoML neural architecture search and hyperparameter with a focus on neuroevolution. So please subscribe if you're interested in these kinds of videos in AI and deep learning. After studying many different topics in deep learning, such as convolutional networks and generative adversarial networks, I became really interested in neuroevolution after listening to this talk at ICML 2019 on population-based search from Jeff Kloon, Joel Lehman, and Kenneth Stanley from Uber's AI Labs. I really recommend checking out their research if you're interested in things like novelty search, quality diversity, and generally neuroevolution. So the idea of novelty search is to have evolution without an explicit fitness objective function. So an illustrative analogy is the Chinese finger trap and how uh, fitness compares with the novelty objective to escape from this trap. So if you use just a fitness function, which is basically measuring how far away your fingers are from the uh, trap, you just pull out and never get out of the trap. But if you explore novel behaviors like pushing in and pushing out, then you'll escape from the Chinese finger trap. So the selection criteria for evolutionary algorithms. Here we have our fundamental loop of an evolutionary algorithm. Initialize, evaluate, crossover, mutate, and then repeat the evaluate, crossover, mutate loop several times. So usually when we evaluate evolutionary algorithms, we just use some kind of fitness score. So in the biped locomotion task, we'd say, how many meters did the robot travel in the 15 seconds it was given to move? And in maze navigation, we'd say, how close did the agent get to the finish line? But novelty would say, uh, did the biped locomotion robot do something different than it's done in the past? And has the maze navigation agent found a new spot on the map that it's never seen before? Using fitness-based objectives are prone to getting stuck in local optima, also referred to in the paper as deceptive objectives. So imagine the agent travels along this path in the uh, fitness evaluation and reaches the top of this local maximum. It has no real way of getting off of the top of this hill using the exploration techniques, crossover, and mutation frequently deployed in uh, evolutionary search algorithms, especially because it's really hard to engineer such a crossover or mutation that would cause it to really go far in high dimensional space. This is only a three dimensional visualization. In many of our previous videos on neuroevolution on Henry AI Labs, we've looked at how neuroevolution is used for neural architecture search, particularly for image classifiers or uh, language models that build recurrent neural networks. So in this context of this paper, we're looking at neuroevolution to build neural networks for control tasks. So this is kind of like the neural networks that are used to map uh, states to actions and reinforcement learning tasks. So for example, in the maze navigation task, the agent has these sensors input about the environment, and it has to use this to make decisions like move left or right, forward or backwards. And the weights of the neural network are encoded in the genotype. They aren't learned by having the uh, algorithm generate an architecture and then going and sending that architecture off for, say, 25 steps of gradient descent and then bringing it back to evaluate it. The weights are already encoded in the genotype, so the evolutionary algorithm just completes the complete, uh, generates the complete agent and then it's sent into the maze or the biped locomotion task. So in the algorithm, we'll re be rewarding agents based on novelty, rewarding an agent for performing a new behavior calculated with a reference archive of all previously explored behaviors. This is in contrast to other evolutionary algorithms that use a fitness objective, where you reward an agent for getting closer to an objective function. So there's a key difference to understand in this paper between diversity and novelty in the genotype or the encoding space and the resulting behavioral space. So you can imagine explicitly encoding the maximum diversity in the encoding space. So say you have bit strings represented neural architectures and you have some fixed length of a bit string. You could explicitly encode a maximum distance and then have like uniform interval spacing between each bit string in the encoding space. But many encodings collapse to the same behavior and it's not clear how to map from encoding to behavior in the tasks like biped locomotion, locomotion and uh, maze navigation. The novelty search algorithm will be implemented on top of the NEAT framework. The NEAT framework's uh, full algorithm walkthrough will be linked in the description below. The NEAT algorithm basically has a framework for starting from a minimal initialization and building up a topology, a neural network, for different control tasks like uh, cart pull balancing, maze navigation, and biped locomotion. So this is based on the genetic encoding framework of a genotype to a network, uh, the historical markings that enable the crossover in the evolutionary algorithm, 
and then uh, speciation and explicit fitness sharing, which is sort of a similar idea to the novelty algorithm, and then the minimal initialization. Start from one node and then build up the network. So the key idea is to replace the fitness evaluation in the neat algorithm with a novelty metric. So this is done by keeping an archive of behaviors encountered and then determining using a nearest neighbor computation if the new behavior is significantly far from any other behavior experienced in the archive. So this is the big question in the novelty search paper. How do we define behaviors? If we're not defining it in the encoding space, the genotype, then what makes a behavior? In the maze navigation task, the behavior is defined as the final point reached by the agent, the XY coordinate it lands on after traversing through the maze. In ablation studies, this behavior is extended to represent the trajectory the agent takes as it gets to its final point, so say sampling five different XY pairs it takes during its trip. In the biped locomotion task, behavior is defined by sampling the center of the mass of the biped robot throughout the 15 seconds it has to try to travel as many meters as it can. And this is given by this equation here. So now we'll walk through the maze navigation and biped locomotion tasks and explain how the algorithm uh, operates in this space. So maze navigation, the neural network has this, these sense of uh, inputs. It has a rangefinder and a radar, both which are looking for nearby uh, obstacles. And it has to learn a neural network that can learn how to understand these inputs, such as to do novel behaviors in this task, rather than just the fitness of get closer to the finish line. So these are the results of the novelty versus fitness versus random selection algorithm for maze navigation. The novelty search significantly outperforms the fitness-based algorithm, uh, finding the maximum fitness in much less evaluations of the algorithm. On the medium map and then on the hard map, the novelty search performs even better, completely outperforming the fitness-based algorithm. The novelty objective function compared with the fitness objective results in a three times speed up of the evaluations it takes to find a solution and a 2.5 times reduction in the connection complexity of the resulting neural network. The novelty objective takes 18.3 thousand evaluations on average and uses 24.6 connections, whereas the fitness objective uses 56.3 thousand and 66.7 connections on average. And again, this is the medium map. The agent starts here and it has to learn to navigate around like this to reach the finish line. In the hard difficulty map, where the agent starts here and has to reach this finish line, the fitness objective only finds solutions in 3 out of 40 runs, whereas the novelty objective finds a solution in almost every run on an average of 35.1 uh, thousand evaluations and using an average of only 33.5 connections. This is a really interesting uh, map maze navigation task because it can be really deceptive. The agent just goes this way as it's like, get closer to the objective, get closer to the objective, get closer to the objective, and then it's stuck along this local optima. Whereas the novelty search, it will probably do more of like a radius type of thing and then actually explore this region. Whereas the fitness function, it will be really hard to get it to explore this region. This visualization shows how the novelty search and the fitness search traverse each maze. And it's really interesting to take a couple of seconds to look at and just get a sense of how the fitness function traverses along this path, trying to get closer to the objective in each case. Whereas the novelty algorithm has way more of an exploration component to it. Another really interesting extension to the maze navigation framework used in this paper is the unbounded map. In this case, the agent starts here and has to reach this finish line, but it could just theoretically go this way forever or this way forever. So in this case, the unbounded map uh, results in neither algorithm can really solve it well, although the novelty does slightly outperform the fitness objective. So this shows that although novelty search is more successful, constraining the space of possible behaviors is still very important and fitness search isn't necessarily the alternative when novelty doesn't work because still fitness doesn't work in this type of scenario. Another interesting component of this algorithm that we mentioned earlier we talk about is the idea of the behavioral complexity. So this chart shows what happens if you sample the trajectory of the maze navigation rather than just the final point. So 100, for example, represents sampling 100 different XY pairs to define a unique behavior in the archive. And this plot shows that even with this increased dimensionality of the behavioral space, the novelty search is still able to perform the task. So now let's get into biped locomotion. In biped locomotion, the agent can apply force on two different degrees of freedom in each hip joint and one on the knee joint. And in this case, the knee can go uh, forward and backward like how birds walk because it doesn't have like a torso or an ankle joint to uh, balance itself. So the intuition of novelty search on biped locomotion is that initial attempts might just simply fall down. However, the novelty metric would reward falling down in a different way, regardless of whether it's closer to the objective or not. 
but an objective function may explicitly reward falling the farthest, so just leaning forward and falling that way. Because even though it doesn't really lead to the ultimate objective of walking, it does increase the local optimum of getting closer to the uh, finish line. So after a few ways to fall in the uh, novelty search are discovered, the only way to be rewarded is to find a behavior that doesn't fall right away. So behavior, again, in the biped locomotion task is measured as this distortion of the center of the mass of the robot and is sampled repeatedly uh, during the 15 seconds the robot is given to walk as far as it can. This plot shows how the novelty search outperforms the fitness-based search on average runs with the distance achieved in the 15 seconds. The novelty search averages 4 meters, whereas the fitness search averages under 3 meters. Also notably is it uses much less connections slash complexity in the neural network. But the most interesting trend is that the best member of the novelty search population travels 13.7 meters, basically uh, more than doubling the best result from the fitness objective function. From my interpretation of the paper, the most interesting takeaway I had is the detection and classification of these behaviors in the uh, agents in the control task. So it's interesting that in both these pro uh, problems, they have these heuristics for evaluating behaviors by sampling things like the final location in the maze navigation and then the center of the mass of the locomotion robot. So it might be interesting to see anomaly detection computer vision models that can observe the agent interacting in the environment and then detect if it has a novel behavior in that way. So it's interesting, will hard-coded heuristics like the center of mass distortion scale to more complex control tasks, like say teaching a robot how to shoot a basketball? Or will that require maybe another computer vision model in the loop that is doing anomaly detection, whether it itself is a generative adversarial network that models the distribution of behaviors and uses that to detect if the behavior is a novel idea or not? It's definitely interesting to think about the future of detecting novelty in the behavioral space. Thanks for watching this video on novelty search in our September edition series of Neuroevolution. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.